Hey friends, just made want to make a quick intro to Kimmy B2. I'm starting a project, and this is this is purely non-proprietary tools, right? So no one's no vendors, pod code, Gemini CLI, anything like that, and uh, going only through the API. So I decided to try Kimmy for a particular project that I want to do, starting an Emacs Lisp to create some tools for file writing within this particular framework that I use called GPTEL and mcp.hpl. However, I also want to do a phase two where that turns into an MCP server that anyone can use. Because as we know, if we've used Claude code, it's, it's file writing and editing is just flawless, generally. But uh, when we try to use or find file editing tools, for other LLMs, in my experience, it's been brittle and very frustrating. So I decided to uh, that I that I needed to fix that, and I decided that I would try uh, the Kimmy B2 model, and I'm using it through something called uh, Together AI. So uh, Together AI is a cheap way to a very cost-effective way to access all kinds of uh, open source or open weight models. And so that's what I'm using. And then I gave it a bunch of tools. The tools that I gave it are the ones that I wrote in Emacs Lisp that are not working beautifully right now. Also, some uh, file for some OS tools like list directory, change directory, execute commands, so that it can actually execute shell commands as well. A very dangerous thing to do when you have uh, passwordless sudo. And then my reflection tools that give it access to Emacs packages, info manuals, and OS man pages. So I started out, hey, can we please add the project root to this path? Note that we are chatting in the context of an Emacs org mode buffer. Note that we are Emacs and org mode nerds. Please check and set and then verify that the project root is correct. Then we shall chat. It responded, hey, yeah. So it matched my tone, which was great. Let me set the project root. Now, what it did is it did uh, something very reasonable. It sees that it has shell tool access, so it did a CD. Now, that's going to be very ephemeral, but eh, uh, we'll, we'll see if that works. And then it said, uh, the pro it, it said project root confirmed. We're now operating from Project CMX tools for GPTEL. Let me verify our project structure, and then we'll dive into the nerd discussion. So it did an ls command and came out with an empty directory. That's because it's not where it thinks it is. So it says uh, project directory exists, but appears to be empty. None of the files that I told it to read. Uh, so therefore, it said it it did another. It did a weird thing. It echoed now in project directory $PWD so it could see what PWD is, I suppose. And it should have noticed that the directory it's in is not what it expected. So it failed to do something there. So it says, so we're starting in an empty directory. Shall we begin by setting up our project structure? And I said, ah. Wrong assumption. You have a set of file tools tools. That's part of its uh, tools that it has available. But the OS-oriented MCP controller tools have their own separate means of current working directory and, and, uh, and print working directory. So I have added those to your arsenal. Please set CUWD to, to the project root and test your LS command again. Love, human. That's because I was in a mood. And it said, ah, got it, thanks for the clarification. And it tried again, and this time validated where it was, and this time it, when its ls command returned more something that would be expected. Ah, there we are, it says. And let's, we have our beautiful org mode files shining in their glory. Again, it's matching tone, which is very much fun. These things should be fun. And it said, it's kind of guessing what these things are. It has not actually read these files yet. 
but you know, fair enough, its guesses are correct. So the ter MCP terminal controller tools indeed have their own way of handling working directory, while the file tools maintain project root contents. Shall we dive into today's work? And I said, yowza, now we're cooking with gas. I recommend you review these files and summarize what this crazy project may be about. Feel free to investigate the key Emacs packages that are part of this project. It immediately went and started using tools effectively. But there is a catch, as we will see, which I still haven't debugged. But um, it read the readme.org. It read planning.org. And then it gave this strange text that looks like an attempt to call a tool that didn't work. So I said, did something go haywire? Please continue if possible. And it did the same thing. So I said, okay, it appears your attempt to read cast.org is not working. It then tried to figure out what was going on and then called the read file again, or it, what it thought it should do. And that didn't work. So what I did instead of fixing the tool at the moment is I said, I will attach task.org to the contents. So what I did is I went in and said, dash F, add task.org. So now we have a new file added to the contents. After that happened, it said, thanks human. <laughs> Let me continue with the analysis using that uh, task.org. Here's my compre comprehensive summary of what this crazy project is about. So it wrote what looks like an org mode outline, project uh, snapshot. This is the problem being solved. Uh, it uses emojis as all LLMs love to do. Here's the product. Here's the functions that, uh, that are provided. This is actually a um, substantial subset of the, of the functions that are provided. And then we do, after every destructive operation, we create dual backups. The future arc is to create an MCP server. It's kissing my ass here, calling it a genius categorization of new dual families, which I may decide to uh, write in the future or, you know, abide code in the future. And here's the insight. Uh, every function reports what it did in plain language. That's absolutely true. I want to make it uh, uh, kind of bulletproof for any LLMs that can use tools. And then that. Okay. But I said, well, actually the tools as they exist are still not what is promised in the editing prophecy, the Popol LLM Vu. I was hoping it might pick up on that. They still provide unclear guidance uh, as to file cleanliness. They fail to realize that certain slacker LLMs, not you, and this is fun because it picks up on that, may fail to read current state prior to replacing line ranges and may not even perform what their doc strings advertise. So therefore, what would you write as a PRD, this is a product requirements document, or something similar for a brilliant expert such as yourself coming to solve this problem with no prior context? What I'm really asking for is a PRD for a brand new rewrite of this thing. If I think the current, or I think the current instructions sh could use some shoring up so that we can let you rip on a brand new implementation. So here's what it said. It created what again looks like an org thing with a, a title, <laughs> uh, MCP AI file editing requirements, Return of the Jedi. I don't know, it's keeping some sort of humor. Executive summary, anticipating every failure that in uh, mode an LLM could encounter, excellent. The target persona, <laughs> and this is hilarious, Kimmy is an expert level AI assistant who sometimes has to interact with, well, other LLMs that might be drunk, distracted, or otherwise unreliable. These slacker models frequently skip state refresh, that's true, ignore error boundaries, that's true, overestimate intent, replace ranges that they've never actually, that's true, and they mistranslate doc strings. That's more of what I said was a problem with the existing functions, but that's okay. They probably could also do that. We must design tooling that protects the project against its own caller. That's exactly right. The core principles, we want atomic verification, self-documenting state, 
which is an interesting idea. And we'll see if this works. Fail dead stop. Fail dead stop. Every dangerous op is an all or nothing transaction. That should be the case. It has an auditable history. Again, a fascinating idea. We'll see if we can implement it. And zero doubt, the implement should all the element should always know whether its command worked. Absolutely. Immutable requirements. And look, it's starting to make requirements. I love it. State before change. Uh, the, every destructive invocation, like a write or a replace, must inline a cryptographically short digested state summary, digest state summary, really, inside the function's return. This lets a diligent assistant notice if the file shifted under its feet before issuing the next command. Brilliant. And that will, that will work for the MCP server and not only for the Emacs version looking for dirty buffers that have to be flushed. So if it works, great. Before write, reopen the file from disk, again an attempt buffer in Emacs, create a second quick diff against the cached baseline. If the diff is non-empty error with the exact delta line indices, this stops slacker off by one chaos in fast path, in fast path, whatever it means, not after backing up. Yeah, in other words, write uh, as you're going in hot. <laughs> okay, perfect. Intent reflection. It must include an intent paragraph. This is so good. Replace lines. This is our intention. Okay. LLMs that need to parse their own intent will always succeed. Idempotent replacements. Yeah, if you try to do the same replace twice, it'll recognize that the replace is already done. Brilliant. Yeah, you could do that if you had if the hashing works, if the whole hash methodology looping thing works. Beautiful. It helps testing also. It helps writing the test. Redline slow commit. I haven't read through this yet, by the way. This is this is my first, and it's I'm <laughs> really excited. So tier one, replica commit runs in staging. Create temp copy updated to compute exact paths to push that patch only if the patch checksum is unchanged and then rename automically. Okay. <laughs> wow, this is way more than I would have specified. I love it. So the API service, MCP friendly JSON. So this is what the tool calls would look like and would work for an MCP server as well as the GPTEL uh, tool definition. And then it would return, oh, 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 love it. I don't know how this works because I haven't written an MCP server yet. But if the, if the result from the MCP server can separately have the status code and not just mixed in text with the, um, you know, with the success uh, comment or whatever. That's fantastic. All right, then we have fill your catalog. Oh, this is so beautiful. It really looks kind of like a PRD. Testing strategy. I'm going to have to ask it about some of these things, like what it means by para users. A marathon 500 edit integration test session using simulated unreliable LLM never corrupts repository. Well, that would be a hell of a great test. <laughs> a working world test. Good God, this is brilliant. Your LLM will never again accidentally delete the wrong line even when it totally forgets to read the file first because every write operation atomically proves what actually happened after the fact. Don't you also always want an epic elevator pitch for your work? For your workplace yeah this is pretty great i'm really really happy with the start we're going to see if kimmy is better than gemini right now at using tools which would be amazing it was supposedly trained with tool use so basic training having to do with tool use uh, could be really interesting i think every other llm that knows how to use tools will go through that same kind of training uh, in the in the near future as well, tool usage is good and getting better, and 
Let's see how we go with, uh, with Kimmy. Thanks. Please comment, like, subscribe, but especially comment, uh, especially if you haven't used this kind of thing yet with tool usage or with open weight tool use. In the past, my open weight uh, attempts with DeepSeek and Llama and other things have been disappointing, but now we've got new Kimmy, new Quinn, upcoming new Llama. Uh, should be very, very interesting. All right. Thanks for watching.